Hi, boys and girls. Hi. Welcome to Sunday School today. As you can see, Mrs. Niedermeyer and I are still separated. I'm in, actually in Arizona this week and next week. And Mrs. Niedermeyer is back home after visiting her daughter and grandchildren. So um, we'll be like this, this Sunday as well as next Sunday. And also, let me say to you guys, in case you hear loud noises, it's because I'm outside and there's cars going past. So hopefully you can't hear that. But uh, before we have Mrs. Niermeyer start the lesson or bring us the lesson for today, I will open us in prayer. So let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you again for the time where we can come to Sunday School and learn more about you. Thank you for uh, the, the next couple of weeks that we're talking about how you sent Jesus to die for our sins, to um, pay for our sins so that we can spend eternity with you. We pray that you'll just help each one of us to understand that we're sinners, that we need to have that forgiveness, and that we will ask you to uh, come and, and give our sins so that we can spend eternity with you in heaven. We thank you again for this time, and we just pray that you'll be with all of us today and the week coming up, that we'll have a good week. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, welcome to Sunday School again. We're so glad that you're here today with us. And I want to ask you a question about celebration. Now, the word that you're seeing on the screen right now says celebrate. And there's a lot of different things that we do that we uh, celebrate. We might celebrate with our friends. We might celebrate with our family. But what are things that we celebrate? Well, sometimes we celebrate birthdays. I bet at your house, maybe you have a cake or maybe you blow candles or maybe you get balloons. And we might celebrate somebody who gets a new job because that's exciting for them. So we celebrate things that are good and we celebrate people that we want to honor. So when it's your birthday and your family sings happy birthday to you, it is because they love you and they honor you and they want to show you how excited they are for you. Now I'm going to show you some examples of another way that people celebrate. Sometimes we celebrate with a parade. You know what a parade is? Have you been to a parade? It's a lot of times where people are going down the street and then there's crowds on the side and they're always cheering. So I have some examples today. On the 4th of July, when our country became a country of its own on its independence, and maybe you celebrated by going to a 4th of July parade, and you'll notice on the picture in front of you that they are waving the American flags, and then there are some people that have balloons, and somebody dressed up has their little dog in a wagon, they're walking in a parade, and they have music playing, there's a drummer, and then there's a, somebody playing the trumpet, and when you go to a 4th of July parade, if you're lucky, they throw some candy out for you. Maybe you've been to one of those parades. Or there's a parade where we honor people. So this is a parade that took place a long time ago. If you'll notice the man in the spacesuit, his name is Neil Armstrong, and he was the first man to actually go up into the air, land on the moon, and walk on the moon and he put the American flag there. So when he came back to Earth, came back to Earth on his rocket ship and he came back with the other astronauts, they had a big parade and you can see that there's cars coming down the street and he's, the astronauts are waving and the crowds are cheering for them. They're honoring him because he did something great. Then on Thanksgiving day, there's a big parade. Maybe you've watched that in the morning with your family before your Thanksgiving meal. It's called the Macy's Day Parade. And that's a day where they blow up these big, huge balloons and they have them walking down the street. And then there's crowds all along the sides of the road, all along the sides of the street. And they clap and they cheer and some of them sing. And they're celebrating, we're honoring Thanksgiving Day, where it's a time when we stop and honor and we're thankful and we're thankful for our families and for the good things that God has given to us. And then this last one is a really big parade that happened in Chicago, and it's when the Chicago hockey team, the Blackhawks, won this Stanley Cup, which means they won the big championship game. And if you can see in the, the red buses that are coming down the street, that's a parade of all of the players, and then all on the side are all those people. And do you see how they're raising their hands up and they're clapping and they're cheering? They're honoring those players for doing such a great job. Now, today we're going to talk about a kind of a parade that Jesus was involved in. And I want you to think today, Miss Pam is going to be reading a lot of our Bible verses for us. And I'm going to be asking you some questions. But last week, Miss Pam told you a story about something that Jesus did for someone. 
a boy, what was it that he did? What did Jesus do for that boy that was dead? He was no longer alive and a mother was so upset. Do you remember what he did? That's right. He healed him. He raised him from the dead. So today we're going to begin our lesson with this. Jesus had been very busy recently and he had done things for weeks and even years. I want you to think, can you think of some of the things that Jesus had been doing for other people? So let's think. Hmm. I came up with some ideas. I'm going to show you a picture and see if this gives you a clue. That's Jesus in the white. What is Jesus doing? That's right. He's teaching. He's teaching others. He taught his disciples and his disciples would follow him along and Jesus would teach his disciples all about God the Father. So that kept him very busy. And do you remember this story? Remember Jesus what fed a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people from one little boy who just had some fish and some loaves. Remember, he fed all those people, and then the boy came along, and he picked up the leftovers, and there were many baskets left over. So Jesus was doing miracles of feeding people, and sometimes he helped people that were sick. Remember, there's been people in the Bible that were sick. There was the man who couldn't walk. There was a boy who died. There was people that had high fevers and headaches, all kinds of things, people that were blind and Jesus healed them. That kept him very busy. And again, Jesus was healing people from uh, raising people from the dead. Now he didn't do that often, but he did do it. If you remember Lazarus, he raised him from the dead. Could you or I do that? We could not do that. But Jesus can because Jesus is God's son and Jesus loved people and he was powerful. Now, when Jesus was with his disciples, he knew that it was time for him to go to the city of Jerusalem, and he told this to his disciples. He said, it's time for me to go. We, I'm going to, we need to go to Jerusalem, where I will be arrested, and I will be put to death. Well, boys and girls, do you think the disciples like to hear that news? That's, those are bad things that happen. But Jesus was perfect, and Jesus was God's son, and Jesus had never sinned. Why should he be arrested, and why should he have to be put to death? Well, he shouldn't have to, but because Jesus loved us, he was willing to do just that. So as they were walking on the road to Jerusalem to go there, he was with his disciples. He gave some directions to some of his disciples, and Miss Pam is going to read Luke 19, verses 30 and 31. And I want you to listen and see if you can understand what Jesus wants them to do. It says, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why, you're, why you are untying it, say, the Lord needs it. All right, so Jesus was telling them ahead of time, we're going to go into the next city and you're going to find uh, Colt and his mom and your, his mom, Colt, his mom, <laughs> kind of not like your mom, a person, but an animal. And you're going to have to loose it, which means you're going to have to untie it. Now, I can't just walk up to somebody who's got a dog outside in their front yard and take it. That wouldn't be right for me to do. But do you hear, did you hear what Jesus said? He said, when somebody, if somebody asks you something, tell them that the master has need of it. So that is just what they did. They obeyed Jesus, just like Jesus wants you to do. And Jesus wants me to do. His disciples did exactly what they were told to do. So the next thing that happened is Miss Pam is going to read Luke 19 verses 32 through 34. And I want you to think about something. Did that owner of the colt come to see the disciples and what did they say and what did the disciples say back to them to the owner okay miss pam those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them as they were untying the colt its owner said ask them why are you untying the colt they replied the lord needs it all right so mariah while the disciples disciples were untying the colt what did the owner ask the disciples do you remember? That's right. He asked them, what are you doing? What are you taking? Why are you taking my colt? And Isaiah, what did the, what did the disciples say to that? What did they say? That's right. He said, because 
the master has need of it or because the Lord has need of it. So the, just like God, Jesus had predicted, the owner came out and said, what are you doing? Why are you take, unloosening the, the tie of the colt? And just like Jesus said, they answered him and said, because the Lord has need of it. Now, in Luke 19, 35 and 36, we're going to learn about the disciples, what they did once they got the colt. And then we're going to talk about who sat on the colt and what other people around. Remember, like this is kind of a parade. Jesus is walking into Jerusalem now and he's all going on a road. OK, so Miss Pam, would you read those verses, please? They brought it to Jesus, which means the colt, through their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Okay, so Miss Pam was saying they spread their cloaks. Cloaks, uh, coats are the same thing as cloaks. So back in Bible times, people called them cloaks and we call them coats today. So Joelle, I'm wondering what did the disciples put on the colt? Do you remember what they did? They took off their, that's right, took off their coats and they put it on top of the colt so that the next question, Jaden, who was the person who sat on the donkey's back? That's right, Jesus sat on the donkey's back. And remember, sometimes animals are not that clean or anything. And so the disciple had put a coat on the donkey so that Jesus could sit on the coat. And isn't that nice that they thought of Jesus that way? They didn't want him to have to sit on that stinky old donkey right there like that. Joanna, what did the other people do with their clothes? What with their clothes, they, their cloaks, what did they do with them? Where did they put them? That's right. They put them right on the street, right on the road. Can you imagine? I don't know about you, but when I take my coat off, I don't like to throw it on the road. I don't like to throw it on the street. I don't want to throw it on the ground because it might get dirty. But these people love Jesus so much that they wanted to honor him and make sure that he or the colt did not even have to step on the dirty street. Isn't that a great way to honor Jesus? So as they're walking, Jesus is coming down the street on that colt and crowds are starting to just really gather around. And there's people on both sides of the street and they're probably cheering. They're probably looking to see where, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Now, in Zechariah 9.9, I want to tell you something. That is in the Old Testament. So that is before Jesus was born. And one of the really neat things about the Bible is that there are prophecies. There are things written about in the Old Testament that happen in the New Testament. And if you will listen to Zechariah 9.9, it says, uh, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout. O well, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. Who is that king that they're talking about? They're talking about Jesus. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a, what do you think he was, they tell us, donkey. That's right. So this verse says that he is, the king is coming. He is just in bringing salvation. He is lowly. He's riding on a donkey, just like happened in, in Mark and in Matthew, the stories. In the New Testament, when Jesus was grown up to be a man, way before Jesus was born, this was talked about in the Old Testament. And the reason we can believe it was true is because it is in God's word. And God's word tells us when we get back into Luke that it indeed came true that Jesus was bringing salvation because he was bringing himself and he was riding on a donkey. And this is something else neat. They sang all the crowds on the sides of the street. They started shouting and cheering for Jesus. And Miss Pam, would you read Mark eleven nine? 9? Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All right, they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The people that were doing this, that were shouting this, you can see in this picture, they had palm branches and they were waving them. 
and Jesus was on the colt and there was a, the coat on the colt so that Jesus could sit on that. And all these people were cheering him on and all these people were honoring him because they knew he was the savior of the world. Even though it was talked about in the Old Testament, it came true. Jesus was going to be the savior of the world. That is so exciting. And what a way to honor Jesus. Just like we honor you on your birthday, they are honoring Jesus because he is great and he loves people and he had come to save the world from their sins. Now, there were children and they did it too. They had these palm branches. And right now, Miss Pam is in Arizona and I think there's some trees that look similar to this. And so she sees them when she goes outside and they took these, take these branches and they actually, some of the people that put their coats on the street, they also took a bunch of these branches and they put them on the street, kind of where the parade was going to be walking, where Jesus was going to be on that colt riding. Because again, kind of like making a carpet for him to ride on. And then the children would hold up those branches and they would wave them and they would sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's so exciting. And boys and girls, one of the things that I love is that even the children were praising God. Wasn't that great? Sometimes I think that when children, they think that they don't have to do things or that they don't get to do things. But the Bible tells us that that is not true. Jesus loves children, all the children. And they were there praising him as well. They knew that he was going to be the king. But some of them thought that he was going to be the king on earth. Now, everybody was not happy. Back here, everybody was happy. They're praising him. But it seems like there were a few people that were not happy at all. They were actually angry. And Ms. Pam, would you read these verses, please? Yep, it says, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your, di your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. All right. So the Pharisees were people that were not happy. They didn't like what he was saying. They didn't believe that he was the savior of the world. They didn't believe he was the Messiah come to take the sins away. They didn't believe he was God's son. And they hated that all of these people were cheering for him and honoring him. They did not. And so they said to Jesus, you tell your followers to stop. They should not be saying those things. But what did Jesus say? He said, if they stop, if my crowd people stop cheering, guess what? The rocks will sing out. Can you imagine the rocks singing? Wouldn't that be neat if you heard rocks singing? Well, you can't make a rock sing and I can't make a rock sing. But God created the whole entire world. Could God make a rock sing? He could. But Jesus didn't have the rock sings, right? Did not have the rock sing. But he was just saying to the Pharisees, look, if they pe those people stop, I can even make nature sing out because I am so powerful. Now, boys and girls, one of the things that we need to think about today is praising Jesus. These people were praising Jesus and honoring him because Jesus is God's son. And Jesus, when he was a baby, a little boy, a teenager, and even a man, not even one time did he sin. Not once did he say something that was unkind. Not once did he lie. Not once did he take something that didn't belong to him. Not once did he have a mean, a mean bad attitude. He always did what was right. And because of that, because he was perfect and because he was holy, he could die on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And next week, we're going to learn a little bit, the next two weeks, we're going to learn a little bit more about how Jesus came to earth to die for our sins so that our sins, your sins and my sins could be forgiven. But I love this happy face up here on the end because I thought, we also should be praising Jesus. Can you think of some things that we can praise Jesus for? I think when I, I thought of one that we can thank Jesus, praise Jesus and we can praise God because he created the whole earth. And when we look outside, like it's a nice day outside and spring is coming and we have seasons. So we can praise God that he created the world for us. 
We can praise God that he is holy, that he never sinned. We can praise God that he takes care of us and he's so kind and loving to us. So today I'm going to close in prayer and I'm going to praise him. And would you join me? And this week, while you are at home or you are at school, wherever, whatever you do playing, would you think of some ways that you could praise Jesus? All right, let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for everything that you give to us. We thank you that you take care of us. And Lord, I want to praise you today for creating this lovely world that you gave us. Um, all the seasons and all the beautiful flowers and all of the trees and animals for the different people. I want to praise you for being holy and for being willing to send Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. And we thank you that you love us that much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a good week and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.